Hey guys, I've got a question for you. Which of these would you rather breathe through? This. If you guys said the big plastic pipe, I'm with you. However, for your asthmatic patients, they want to breathe out of this large pipe, but at times they have no choice but to breathe out of this tiny little coffee straw. Asthma is a chronic long-term lower airway disease. It is reactory and non-curable. This disease is marked with bronchoconstriction or the narrowing of the lung passageways, as well as a sudden production of mucus within the same lung passageways. According to the WHO and CDC 2015 to 2017 data, asthma affects 235 to 300 million people worldwide and nearly 24 million people here in America. Nearly 90% of those 24 million Americans diagnosed with asthma have symptoms that are not regularly regulated. This effectively leads to an increase in the severity of their symptoms and calls to EMS for assistance. Typically, you will see asthma diagnosed in childhood. Nearly all asthmatic children are diagnosed by age five. However, there are cases of adult onset asthma, which is diagnosed in adults over the age of 20. Do not rule out the possibility that your 45 year old patient with shortness of breath may indeed have just developed asthma with no prior history. The exact pathophysiological cause of asthma is not yet fully understood. The primary belief at this time is premature airway closure during exhalation causes an increase in functional residual capacity and air trapping. This air trapping results in a ventilation perfusion mismatch and hypoxia, causing an anaerobic respiration metabolism and lactic acidosis. It is offset initially by respiratory alkalosis via hyperventilation, but is compounded once respiratory fatigue and respiratory acidosis ensue. Acute asthma is divided into two phases, an early bronchospastic phase observed within minutes after exposure to the allergen, causing the release of inflammatory mediators like histamine, prostaglandin D2, and leukotriene C4, and a later inflammatory phase causing airway swelling and edema due to the release of ECP proteins and a major basic protein, MBP. Patients typically know what triggers their symptoms, and each patient may have a different trigger. So be sure to ask your patient if they know this information. It could assist in helping you identify the causes of their shortness of breath. Triggers can include allergens such as pollen, pet dander, dust, mold, exercise, tobacco smoke, sudden weather changes, emotional stress, sinusitis, sulfites, and air pollutants like perfumes, smog, sprays, and other fumes. When a trigger comes in contact with the lungs, the lungs begin an attempt to protect themselves. Just like when the bronchi and bronchioles constrict during congestive heart failure to protect the alveoli, the lungs do the same in asthma. Bronchi and bronchioles begin to contract or narrow in an attempt to keep the irritant or trigger away from the alveoli. This narrowing of the bronchi leads to the shortness of breath as well as air trapping. It is typically easier for an asthma patient to bring air into the lungs than it is for them to blow air out of the lungs. Remember, this is your patient attempting to breathe through the coffee straw. You may begin to hear loud, audible expiratory wheezing or wheezing within the lungs while auscultating with your stethoscope. <laughs> The wheezing represents the air being forced through the constricted bronchi and bronchioles. Other symptoms include chest tightness, signs and symptoms of hypoxia, anxiousness, and frequent coughing. Many of you I'm sure have heard the term cardiac asthma. I want to be clear, cardiac asthma is not regular bronchial asthma. It is not really asthma at all. It is a symptom of heart failure and should not be associated with bronchial asthma. If you want more information on the pathophys of cardiac asthma, check out this video right here 
The link for it can be found in the comments and the description below. What we have covered so far is considered the first bronchospastic phase of asthma. EMS providers should be treating these symptoms with oxygen to maintain saturations above 93% with the use of a nasal cannula, non-rebreather mask, CPAP, or the bag valve mask. They also should be using nebulized bronchodilators like albuterol, nebulized atrovent to dry mucosal secretions, and IM or IV steroids like solumedrol or dexamethasone, also known as Decadron. When an acute asthma attack has lasted longer than a few hours, it is now considered status asthmaticus and has fully entered the second inflammatory stage of asthma. During both phases, the continued inflammation that causes the bronchoconstriction also plays havoc on the submucosal cells lining the walls of the bronchi and bronchioles. These mucosal cells hypersecrete mucus, causing further narrowing of the airways. Your asthma patients may still be able to produce white to clear colored sputum from their cough. Be sure if they do have a productive cough to always follow up and question the frequency and the color of the sputum. Patients in status asthmaticus will continue to have wheezing, but as the condition worsens, lung passageways will close and the wheezing will turn into diminished and or absent lung sounds. EMS providers should be treating these severe patients with IM epinephrine and IV drips of magnesium sulfate to aid in the bronchodilation. Paramedics should also be considering intubation at this point to maintain oxygenation and perfusion status as respiratory failure may be imminent. Remember, our goal as EMS providers is to get these asthmatic patients as close to breathing out of the big plastic pipe as we can. The longer we allow them to breathe through the coffee straw, the closer they are going to get to respiratory failure. Breathing is hard work. Now make them work harder in a growing acidotic environment and the brain is eventually going to say, screw this, I quit. Asthma patients, no matter the age, need to be evaluated quickly and treated aggressively to avoid the consequences of respiratory failure. Well guys, that's it for today's video. Make sure to check out these two videos right here for more awesome information. Stay safe out there and I will see you guys in the next video.